Step 2. Maxwell's third equation 2. Before we continue with our derivation of Maxwell's third equation, let's recap what we have learned in the first step. So we saw that the changing magnetic flux induces an EMF in the conducting wire. And we said that the relationship between the induced EMF is that to be the negative of the rate of change of the magnetic flux going through the area of the wire. And our um, goal is to relate this magnetic flux, which can be expressed in terms of the magnetic field, and relate it to uh, an electric field, which is some function of the EMF. So, how do we do that? In order to do that, we have to introduce a few new concepts, and that's the electric potential energy and a related uh, concept called the electric potential. So let's see what those are. So what is the electric potential energy? I'm sure that you are familiar with the gravitational potential energy. If you consider uh, uh, some object of mass m, for example this apple, that's raised uh, to height h above the surface of the Earth. And I'm sure that you know that the uh, gravitational potential energy of that object is simply given by the mass of the object times this constant g, the acceleration due to gravity, times the height. Now, the thing about uh, potential energy is that you, it can have any value depending on where you define your uh, origin. Usually it makes sense to define the origin to be the surface of the Earth. So we call this the potential energy of the object at the surface to be zero, and then when we raise it to height h, it has this following potential energy. What it means really is that if you let go of the object, it will accelerate towards the surface of the Earth, gaining kinetic energy. And just as it hits the surface of the Earth, it will have kinetic energy that will be equal to its potential energy given by this expression. Another way of thinking about it is what work do we need to do in order to raise the apple from the uh, surface of the Earth? So the work done is just the force times the distance for which uh, uh, we apply the force. And what is the force? Well, it's simply given by Newton's expression n m times g. Why is it n times g? Because that's the force we need to apply to the apple just so that we start uh, uh, raising and lifting it. And we have to apply the force for this height h. So we see that the work that we need to do is the same as the potential energy. The situation here with uh, electric fields and chargers is very similar. Consider that you have some uniform electric field, and this can be produced by a very large sheet of metal, so very large conducting plate. And in this case, this, this uh, 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 plate is negatively charged, and our test charge is positive, given by this plus Q. And what we do, we, we start at the surface of, uh, of the metal, and we say that that's uh, our position where the potential energy is zero, the electric potential energy is zero. And then we have to apply some force to raise the charge to work against the field to height r, or to distance r away from the charged uh, conducting plate. And we know that this, this work is just given by the force times the distance. Force, in this case, is just the magnitude of the charge times the magnitude of the field, and then times r, which is the distance away from the uh, charged magnetic plate. So we see that the work done is, again, the potential energy, the electric potential energy. But the thing is that this electric potential energy is a function of both the field and the test charge itself. You can see it in this expression right here. It depends both on the magnitude of the field and the magnitude of the charge. So in many times, we are only interested in the properties of the field. We don't want to have different expressions for this electric potential energy when we are putting different charges in the field. So what we do is we can define the electric potential as the electric potential energy per unit charge. So really what we do is we just take our potential energy and we divide it by the charge. Or we say that we are considering the scenario where uh, we have a test charge of uh, Q equals to 1. So in this case, the work done that needs to be uh, done is given by the magnitude of the electric, electric field times the distance r away from the conducting charged metal plate. 
And now we see that this is the property of only uh, the field itself and it doesn't depend on the charge itself. And that way we have arrived at an expression for the EMF or the potential difference uh, uh, in terms of only the electric field and some distance r. So we say that the EMF is equal to the magnitude of the electric field times the distance. Now, where does that leave us? Let's return to our conducting loop. And now what we can do is we can divide this loop into these very small uh, uh, um, chunks, these very small lengths, uh, denoted by dl. And really what you should be thinking about, they're infinitesimally small. And we ask, what's the EMF across this distance? Well, we can say that it's the uh, electric field dot product with the, um, with the segment of the loop dl. And now we, are, we want to know what is the total EMF across the whole loop. So all we have to do is we have to add up all this tiny little contribution, these uh, ELs, around the whole loop. So really what we are doing is we are taking the line integral around the closed loop, denoted by the capital L over here, of these uh, 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 small line segments given by this expression here. And this way, uh, uh, combining this result with our previous result from step one, we arrive at the following expression. We arrive at Maxwell's third equation. We have that the integral of e dot dl around this closed loop is equal to the negative of the surface integral of uh, uh, the change of the uh, magnetic field dot dA. So this expression here, before we were writing in terms of the magnetic flux, now we are explicitly uh, writing it in terms of the magnetic field. And this law is known as Faraday's law of induction or Maxwell's third equation.